Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to talk about six things to never include in your code. Looking forward to it, man. Hey, and welcome to the Automators Podcast. I'm Jackie Stoop from Copenhagen, here with... Joe Glines out of Dallas, Texas. How's it going, everyone? Yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, so today we were, we were covering the six things to never include in your code. And, and just a footnote here, when we say never, you know, it's just if you do include them, you know, you, you need to have a reason you'd want to include them in your code, right? It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a really good idea. It's something that... Yeah, you can really get, uh, yeah, you can burn your fingers or whatever you would call that if you include this as that the wrong times. That's for sure. Would you go ahead and jump in the first one? Yeah, so the first one you have is hot strings and hot keys. You, you know, you might have passwords, usernames, emails, credit card info, stuff like that. That if you have large scripts, we've been asked many times over, if uh, I should have only one script or many, and there's there's not that many differences to it if you don't compile them. So so if you just keep them in scripts, at, at one point you figure out, hey, this is great. You might be work using it at work. You can log into different systems. You might want to share it with people. Make sure you don't have your personal passwords or usernames or any type of other credentials like that that it's, it's a small thing but you might have it in that one string down there online 125 or whatever so yeah it's a good idea to check it yeah what i actually switched to now it doesn't get around if you compile it without a hotkey right but um i use i put you know some of my things into a token uh, i'm sorry in a, any file in the same folder and then i read it in and that way if i share this main script um, it doesn't have my my login and user info, so it's it's I don't have to worry about it because it's so easy to forget about those kind of things. Um, the yeah. next one, which you mentioned about getting the hot water with, uh, is you know content that could get you fired, right? And we've in webinars we've had people come on, and, oh yeah 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 yeah, that's fine, I can share this stuff, and then later they'll reach out and go, dude, I'm going to get fired, like if if you share that, like we had to obfuscate some stuff. Um, so it, it, it's easy to kind of forget what you're sharing. And actually, like it, even at TI, when I left, they, after, of course, they were all flying with it when I was working. But when the second I left, then they're like, well, you, you've done these things where you're sharing, you know, um, some stuff about this and that, and you need to re remove those today. And I'm like, this is stuff from years ago. It's not even relevant anymore, but fine. Like, I don't, I don't care. Um, but yeah, you do have to pay attention to it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you do have a lot of that. As people are using this at work or in work situations, there can be quite a lot of content in there that you are fine using at work and you might be fine using it in your position, but maybe not everybody is allowed to just use it on a square drive or anything like that. So yeah, it's a good idea to make sure you don't get into that hot water. Right, because sometimes even just letting on like the, the service you're using can be something that a company doesn't want to be public, right? Like they don't want people to know they're using this email provider or whatever, right? They're in just better to ask permission on that one than forgiveness. Yeah, absolutely. And the third one we have is, you know, with API keys and stuff like that, you will get tokens, you, you will have software licenses, you will have software license keys and all that type of stuff. And if you have that in your script and in, in at least in, in the script files that we use, it's exposed. There's there's no reason to give that to everybody. We've seen it on the forums many times over where people have maybe put up their token for their Google search or for uh, another type of, of information like that. And it's okay until someone actually takes it and uses it. And for some reason you can't do any more searches or you're paying for uh, the use of those. And yeah, so make sure you don't include tokens and other types of keys like that. Right, 
yeah, that's, uh, I've done it where like the Google Translate, there's a slight cost to it in, I've given out tools to some people, but I'm like, okay, the cost is so low and I'm giving it to people who don't understand how to um, get into the code and do it, but they still could possibly share that executable on the internet, you know, make it, you know, go viral. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a bit, you know, make sure. Well, the other thing is if you're doing something like that, make sure that whatever credit card or how you're paying for stuff actually has caps. It doesn't automatically just keep getting billed on whatever, right? Cause some of them, you need to charge up and, and those those are a little more you're a little more protected there yeah there's been many types of, of situations with stuff like that and it can be security keys for one or the other thing or it can be an automatic buying process and all the other different types of stuff like that and the bills can run up so yeah make sure you don't which reminds me getting back to the first one with hot string and stuff Sometimes you do if you're if you're working with someone and you're you're letting them log into your account to do something, um, you give them a password. Just don't have that as like your standard password that you always keep it as. Change it to something else first, give it to them temporarily, and then switch it right when they're done. Right and go back and never ever also give the authorization for the two party you know OAuth thing. Only give them the first one, and you have to okay it every time they want to log back in or whatever. Right? Which is yeah. Not it's it's it can be cumbersome, but I've done it even with um, tech supports on websites and stuff like that. Yeah, they'll they'll get their own login uh, credentials and stuff like that, but I'll still be the one okaying every login, even though it's cumbersome. But yeah, yeah it's it's what it is. So yeah, yes. we do. Do we have the next one, perhaps? I think I'm on the next one. Yeah. So um, you, here's an obvious one for, you know, don't use your, don't put out your full legal name, especially like your legal name, your phone number, your home address, you know, or sometimes you might even inadvertently have your, like your latitude and longitude, things that they can look up, your birth date, so obviously your social security number, right? But even like, I know we've talked about this, Jackie, with like, I know for you, you do it more than I do, but I still like somewhat of not putting like my children's info you know, out there. It's just, it's a crazy world, right? And and again, as we say this stuff, we're not saying you never do it. It's just be cautiously aware when you do it that it's really required and needed because more often than not, it's not needed. Yeah, and it, it is the issue with people using bigger scripts or just sharing something quickly and or they're asking for help with something and they might post large bit of code without actually knowing that they posted something that was quite personal to them. It can be all kinds of things, but yeah, uh, at least the things that Joe mentioned, like locations and children's and I don't know. Yeah. And locations and stuff. Let me take the next one. Cause it's actually, we're going to, I'm going to jump over to it because it has to do with that. Like your holiday plans, right? Like you might actually include something you know, in your code, making a note about when you're going to be away on vacation or that. Um, but if they, if someone knows where you live and they know that information, that's really bad stuff, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, I'd say I've also allowed at times my uh, scripts to receive or retrieve information from my personal Google account. Mm. Um, so, so that would also be quite a bad one to have out here if people could access your private entries in your calendar. Uh, I know with uh, my Google speakers here that it, they have this voice match and unless the voice actually matches, you can't get information from, let's say, your calendar. And stuff like that is quite important because even here I have Windows where you can actually see my fridge um, front. And if I was putting schedules and stuff like that on there, it would be the same as sharing a script with all kinds of information. And it might be something way off for you or something you didn't think about. But yeah, it's, it's a good idea not to let people know your exact location at a given time. I, I even, for instance, in my... Uh... My GP, I have an old GPS in my car that it's actually, it's a Garmin device in my car. And what I purposely, especially when I live in the city now, it really doesn't matter. But um, when I hit home, it's not my address. It's actually like five houses down. <laughs> so someone who was to steal it, they couldn't say hit home and go right to my house. 
Yeah, I, I know a lot of people also did that in their phones and stuff like that. They would put their own number on some kind of weird name. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, actually, that's a good point. I, um, I almost never put my real birth date, right? I have a standard, you know, one I put, but it's not mine. <laughs> yeah, and all those small things can be, we're not saying that all kinds of companies can't figure out where when you're born or you can't give out correct information in given situations. But if it's a script or if it's a program or if it's something that you already have an idea that you're going to share, make sure stuff like that isn't in there. We, we also know from more advanced things you can do with your computer, you, you might want to do uh, computer-wise information and including stuff like hard coding your version of Windows, you, you might be doing public or private IP addresses, cookies from the browser, Stuff like that is, it's information that you should keep to yourself. There's no reason to really share it. And I'm not saying that people can use it directly to um, penetrate your home security or anything like that, but they might. So there's right. no reason to share stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like some of the other things on here, uh, you know, what ports are open or where your documents or your Windows is installed, uh, what services are running, right? Or the like the name of your ISP. I, I think you nailed it really well, Jackie. I just add a little bit to it going, all these things on their own aren't necessarily going to allow someone to break into your computer. However, if someone does get access to you, you know, in some ways, it just makes it easier for them. Like if they know what version of Windows you're running, they don't have to try all these different things. They can say, oh, I have some hacks that run on Windows XP and that guy's running XP. Great, I can I can use these, right? It just makes it simpler for them. So yeah. again, there's no, if there's no reason to have it in there, why have it in there? Yeah, same with long file paths, uh, paths and stuff like that. And I'm not saying that it's that important, but a lot of times I see these hard, hard coded paths mm -hmm. to files and they will include a person's name because a lot of people have um, told Windows their first name at least. And it is what it is. But if you're sharing something believing you're anonymous and everybody knows that you're John or Mohammed or whatever name you have, right. it's something that you might not have wanted to share because online you want to be Jeff42. Who knows? Right. It, it's just, it's a good idea to look over stuff like that. Yeah. Or, or let's say you have I, my, my, my name, not that it's Joe Glines. That's not really who I am. No, it's, all right, that's my name. But let's say I want to stay private. Um, you know, like, well, there's a lot of, there's not really, but there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of Joe Glines out there. Yeah. But what if in my code, it also has my wife's name. Now they can triangulate and have a much better way to identify, oh, this is the right one, right? This is that guy. This is that guy, and I have his uh, geolocation, and his holiday plans are that he'll be in Las Vegas for two weeks over Christmas or whatever. Right. Who knows what it could be, but stuff like that, when put together, is just can be very bad. It, it amazes me when I see people still on the trip posting pictures, you know, of like Hawaii or, or Disneyland or wherever, and you're like, you realize you're telling the world you're not home. Like, come on. I would say one of the baddest one, one of the worst ones I saw recently was someone moving into a new house. And to illustrate that, they had a picture of the house with them in front of it. Fair enough. And they had a picture of the keys. <laughs> Very crisp pictures of the keys. Yeah. And... Yeah. It, it, it wasn't hard to copy keys, would be right. a way of right. saying it. I'm not sure how easy it is to copy a key from a picture, but at least it was something that I pointed out very quickly and they removed the picture. Again, it's very clear. And to me, the picture well, was probably, it was a standard type of key. So you could right. most likely have replicated it. Yeah, 
Well, well, at the same time, they they could have said, "Hey, Bob, hey, can I hold your keys?" Because it's again, you, it's the same principle, right? You get a picture of holding keys. They don't know you held someone else's keys, right? Yeah. Like it's a great easy way to obfuscate, you know, to change it. So yeah, yeah, you you had the people, you had the the address, you had uh, probably other types of information, and then you also had a crisp image of the key, and it's just was unnecessary. Cool. Yeah, so, um, so which actually is a good point. Sometimes you do want to have some information in there, but it doesn't actually have to be the exact correct info, right? So you can change it to something else. So there's still a prox a placeholder for it. And so whoever's writing some code for you, whatever, they still understand it's going to be there. And then you go back and change it later. But it's, you know, a little search for place is pretty easy. Yeah, and, and you can also include API keys or software licenses or whatever. It's up to you. But... Again, just be advised that others might use it in the future. See you soon. Bye. Yeah, bye. So thanks for listening to the podcast. And please remember to comment and let us know what you enjoyed about that. And if you have any questions, you know, add in there because uh, it's really great to hear your feedback.